welcome to Hot Weekly. everyone, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is Haunt Weekly, a weekly podcast for the haunted attraction and haunted entertainment industry. Whether you're an actor, owner, or just plain aficionado, we aim to be a podcast for you. And we are back once again. It is a Monday, and you have tuned in to us. Yes, to waste another perfectly good hour. Yes, of your life. To, to borrow from Click and Clack at Car yes. Talk. <laughs> One of, our fav- one of our favorite shows. Uh, yes, this episode is 33. We are covering haunt reviews. With recent events in the haunt industry, we got thinking about haunt reviews and haunt review teams. This sparked right. a few conversations around the house. Yeah. And we decided to turn this into an episode. Yes, so. believe it or not, we talk to each other whenever there's not a mic in front yes, of us. Yes, we, we do. <laughs> Though it does help to have the mic in front of us sometimes. It does. But yes, we will be doing haunt reviews this week. But first things first, we have some business to conduct. I want to start off this week saying thank you to everyone. Yes. Um, the main reason being, you we have put a call out for women in haunting. And you guys have responded in yes. spades. <laughs> yes, we have... A lot of women to get in touch with next week. I'll be making those, um, reaching out to them. Yes. I want to thank oh. everyone who sent us a message on Facebook, tweeted at us, whatever, got us the information we needed. We greatly appreciate it. Right. And over at Haunt Topic, they also posted a, uh, thing a call, yep. a call, you know, yeah, so. to let us know where people are at. Yes. And... I, what it's looking like we're, we're shooting to do, I should say, yeah, is to turn this into a mini series within Hall Weekly, a recurring thing about women in haunting. This is an issue that we both are very passionate about, right? Um, how women are involved in haunting, getting them more involved in haunting, and what you know we can do as an industry to really yes. encourage women at the higher levels of the uh, of our industry. Well, and really at all levels. At all I levels, mean. yes, definitely, but. Yeah, we we want to start out with the higher levels, but um, but I think it's really important to see how actresses are treated. Also, oh, so yeah, I mean, because then, then, like I said, the whole reason we got on this was because we were talking to an actress friend of ours, yes, who had some atrocious experiences, yes, and we felt this was something that needed to be discussed, and this seemed like a great way to do it. Right. So thank you all for your help and your participation. That. Contacts will be going out probably as this is going live. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Um, yeah, Crystal uh, finished up her job. Yes, she's getting ready to start a new one in a few weeks. So while she's down, one this will be one of the projects we are tackling together. Right. Sound good? Sounds great. Should we do the regularly scheduled programming now? Yes, we should. All right. So you want to start off with the conference reminders? Rock paper scissors. Who starts us off? I'll go first. All right. Chicago Frights, July 29th through 31st at Orland Park, Illinois. Giorgio's Quality Inn and Suite, chicagofrights.com. Next up after that, we have Haunt Fair. That's Haunt-F-A-I-R-E. It'll be August 6th through 7th at the Clarion Hotel in Rankin, Coma, New York. Find out more information at Haunt-Fair, F-A-I-R-E. It's that weird spelling affair. Dot com. Um, they'll be doing all kinds of neat stuff, including a fashion show, a car show, an art show, and more. And also a haunted bus tour of Long Island. Not a tour of a haunt, but a haunted where you get on a bus and visit spooky locations in Long Island. Should be cool. Right. And then we've got Scare LA, August 6th through 7th, Pasadena Convention Center, ScareLA.com. Elvira will be hosting. Yes. Then we have the Chicago Room Escape Conference. This is a new one on the list, I believe. Yes, it is. <laughs> new one on the list. August 12th. Through 14th, put on by the people behind Transworld. It's at roomescapeshow.com. And if you go um, on the 13th, enjoy an extra drink in the after party for me. That will be my birthday. Yes. So please have extra good time on the 13th for me. All right. And then we have Halloween and Haunt Fest, August 27th and 28th. This is at the Arlington Convention Center in Texas. Halloweenandhaunt.com is where to find more information. Don't know if the early bird code still works. It's still in our notes. <laughs> no, don't. Our notes do not get updated as often as they should. Probably um, not. I will. But, I will make a note to check that for next week. Yeah. But yeah, and also once again, thanks to Brian Foreman and Haunt Topic for the heads up. Yes. 
Uh, then we have MaskFest, September 9th through 11th in the Marriott Indianapolis East, MaskFest.com. And as Chris, Crystal so recurringly has pointed out, this is as season is ramping up. Great place to pick up your last-minute masks, but try not to pick up any last-minute colds or flus while you're there. Yeah. That would really suck. Yes, it would. <coughs> All right, and then we have the Legendary Haunt Tour, November 11th through 12th. This is just after the Halloween season ends. It's in Pittsburgh. The hotel's still TBA, and it's by the transfer people also. They'll be visiting Scare House and 100 Acres Manor, Legendary Haunt Tour with two Ts.com. And while you're visiting the 100 Acres Manor, be sure to ask them about the uh, new attraction they helped build in Dubai. Yes. They will be impressed by your knowledge of our industry that you gleaned from this show. Yeah. Uh, regular listeners. All right. So, we already did the thank you. I know I put that in a weird place in the notes. That was me being stupid. But anyways, haunt reviews. Yes. You know, and the reason I wanted to talk about this um, is because we have a very weird relationship with haunt reviewers yeah. in our industry. And it's a very tenuous and at times very tense one, it seems. Right. Um, you look at other industries like the film industry and the music industry and so forth, there's a very, very rigid divide between reviewer and artist, so to speak. Right. And that, a lot of the times that's true in our industry too. Yes, it is. Sometimes it is. But there are people like us that do blur the lines. And that's one of the things yeah. we're disclosing openly as we begin this topic yes. is we do haunt reviews. You go to garbagehorror.com, you will see we do haunt reviews. Now we do haunt reviews, we think, very differently. Than yes. everyone else. And we're very proud of doing it very differently for reasons we're going to discuss. And one of the things that we're big about is that we're not actually reviewing haunts. Right. We're talking about haunts. Right. Kind of like we do every week right here. <laughs> yeah. And in, in a weird way, this podcast is sort of an um, offshoot of that, that, that enjoying talking about haunts. Right. But now we're doing it weekly during the off-season, too. Yep. So anyways... It's like I said, the relationship between haunt owners and haunt reviewers is oftentimes very tense and very tenuous. And it, it's not just the fear of the negative review. Right. There's a lot of open hostility. And we saw like what happened in previous weeks of the Ohio Valley Haunts, that review team, and right. how they knocked the industry on its back foot with some horrible comments. Yeah. Um, but there, that, that, that tension goes further back. And some of the complaints that haunt owners have repeatedly levied against haunt reviewers, well, the biggest one, and the one I hear the most often, yes. is they just want free stuff. They come in right. with their 20-odd, 30-odd people, whatever, and they just want to go in for free. They don't want to pay. Yeah, they want to go in for free. They don't do a lot to help the business. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just it. They just they want to go in for free instead of having to pay. Yeah, they, rather than, you know, paying the 25, 35 a ticket, they just would rather write a review. Yep. And publish it somewhere on the interwebs. Um the other thing is that reviews can it's, this is once again allegations from haunt owners that I hear a lot and talking with them. They feel that haunt reviews can be bought with ads. And that's one of the things I do know is you go to a lot of these haunt review team sites, right. they are plastered with ads for haunted houses. Yeah. And those relationships are not disclosed. No, they're <laughs> and, not. And that, that, that worries me a little bit. That's another, that's another criticism and or complaint I hear a lot. And another belief is that reviews are often just marketing in disguise. That giving that free ticket is just basically a way to promote the haunt. It's not about getting feedback. It's not about helping people choose haunts. It's right. about just getting your haunt on a website that people are going to view and maybe go to your haunt. Right. It's 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 that free ticket buys an ad basically. Basically, yeah. Uh, and for a lot of review teams, I would say that holds some truth. Yeah. Because you know uh, they are biased, and if they get in for free, there there is a relationship there where they're going to be more biased they just I don't know. it's a complicated relationship yeah um and it's it's, it's difficult to pinpoint and the part of the problem is we're making we're speaking of generalizations here obviously not every review team not every reviewer does this no of course not yeah uh, but this is a generalization that, I mean, and like I said, we talk, and one of the things we talk a lot about is because we are haunt reviewers. One of the moments we have is that, that coming out moment 
where it's like, oh yeah, we're all we also not only do we run and act in haunts, but we also do haunt reviews occasionally at least. Right. Um, well, that's always a coming out moment. You know what yeah. I mean? It, it's almost like saying, oh yes, I'm also you know gay, Jewish, whatever else. You know what I mean? It's like saying something. I don't know why I threw those two out. I don't know either. That was weird. <laughs> that was, but it's like coming out as something that people might hate you for. Right. There's that moment of tension. Yes. Like, how are they going to react to this? Right. And it, it, there, is, there is a tension when you show up to a new haunted house thinking they've never seen or heard you. Yeah. And then they recognize you at the door. Yeah, like when you go four flipping states away. Yes. <laughs> Remember that happened not too long ago. Yes. And it was really funny because we had one we went to, um, uh, part of Haunt Con. Yes. We went to, we showed him the door, and man's like, I recognize you too. You do haunt reviews. I'm like, yeah, but you're out of our area. We, ne- we didn't think anyone, anyone would know us here. And, of course, he puts on his best. <laughs> we got us some internet here in this part <laughs> yeah. of the country. Yeah. Like, you got us, dude. You got us, man. Straight yeah. up got us. And, but anyways, um, there's also a concern that most of these reviewers are anonymous. Right. They are completely anonymous. They use team names. And they don't, you never know who's really behind them. Right. They could be. There's this thing that, you know, it could be people from the haunted house itself putting out positive reviews to get more customers to the door. Or the whole marketing thing could be a marketing firm. You don't know who it is. Exactly. And one of the things I hear a lot is, well, um, food critics remain anonymous. And they do. Food critics are an anonymous field. But they also don't get the food for free either. Right. You know what I mean? It's... but some haunt review teams are having it both ways yeah. on this one. Um, they all. But another complaint I hear repeatedly is that reviewers do not understand haunting. Yeah, and that goes back to something you touched on earlier, is that a lot of the reviewers and the industri- industry are, there's just a big gap there in knowledge. And not a lot of haunters do reviews, and... It's because, you know, the seasons overlap. Yes. You can't own a full-time haunted house yeah. and be a reviewer. That is correct. But, and it's always weird because w- one of the biggest complaints I've heard um, on podcasts and from other haunters is that reviewers will talk about things without understanding why it's that way. Right. They'll talk about the lack of a ceiling without understanding what fire code necessitates it. Yeah. They'll talk about, you know what I mean? Yeah. They'll talk about something being a certain way, but not realize how much work it would take and how much money it would take to repair, to address that. And so that, you know, it's not even really a matter of necessarily having run or been a professional honor. Right. But having experience in building, acting, and doing even a small haunt gives yeah. you at least some perspective. Right. Any kind of volunteering with it or actually being paid to work there. Yeah. At least um, for a couple of seasons before you go into reviewing. Yeah, I mean, that that because we actually, for us, we worked in haunts for years. Right. Before we ran one. Yeah. And then we ran one for years before we started reviewing them. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much our story. We only got the idea to do the haunt reviews as part of Garbage Horror, which was actually started out as a movie review. Right. Thing. So you know that. The, the haunt review thing was just kind of this weird, well, we're already doing this. We've got the equipment. We've got the studio. We're already visiting the haunts. Why don't we tell people what we think? Why don't we just sit down and talk about them for 10 to 15 minutes and see what happens, if people are interested or not? Turns yeah. out they kind of were. Um, and, and all this comes around to the fact that I, this is my personal opinion, and I admit that. But I don't like the way we do, typically do, reviews in our industry. Okay. Personally, um, and you may disagree, Crystal. You're, you're perfectly allowed to. Yeah. As this point of this podcast, but it seems to me that other industries, whether it's film, whether it's um, food reviews, everything else, has moved way, way past where we are on ha- on reviews. They have much more advanced, much better, and more inform- informative review systems right. than we do. And I just like I said, I think we have a horribly out of date review style. Uh, one thing I find on review site after review site after review site is incredibly vague numbering systems. 
Yeah, because there's no way to know what those numbers mean. What does a nine in special effects mean? What does an eight in acting mean? I mean, I yeah. guess it's better than a seven and worse than a nine, but what does it mean? What does it tell me? Right. And you have no idea how high their scale goes, usually. <laughs> well, yeah. And, well, even if you do have an idea you know, of the scale, go, it doesn't help. Well, not only that, but if you're listening to two or looking at two different review sites for the same haunted house and one uses a one to five and one uses a one to ten, uh, is a five the same as an eight or a nine, you know? Yeah. It, it, it gets really, really confusing. And even all within the same site, it doesn't mean much. Right. I mean, okay, you say special effects are an eight on, on, for a haunt. Right. Okay, well, do they use a lot of digital effects? Are they practical effects? Right. Uh, what what effects? <laughs> yes. I mean, it, it, it's really bizarre to me because I see these reviews and it's like just, it's like baseball stats about <laughs> a haunt and it means nothing to me. Right. I mean, is this, you know, is this haunt exceptionally gory? Is this haunt got really talented athletic actors that will jump out and do incredible things? Are they very, you know, thespian actors that are very, very good at convincing you and selling their role? You know, the makeup, is it genuinely, you know, like really, really good special effects makeup? Do they have really good masks? Are they in great costumes? You know, there's multiple ways you can make a good haunt. Right. And so... You know, make up six, make up eight. What does it mean? It means absolutely nothing. Yeah. Because, you know, one of the creepiest areas in a haunt I've been in had no makeup. Everyone just wore the same masks. It was like something out of the purge. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was really unsettling on a very deep fundamental level. That does, Do they get a makeup zero? You know? Yeah. You know, see what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. <laughs> These numbers are utterly and completely meaningless. Even the, to the final tally, what is it out of you know ten or a thousand? When one there's one that uses it out of a thousand. Oh wow! I found. There's a couple that I think there was one. I know there was a couple one that used out of a hundred. I think there was one that used out of a thousand. But the other issue with these numbers is score inflation. And now, if you're not familiar with score inflation, what is half of ten, Crystal? Five. This is this is not a difficult math question. So theoretically, if you have a one to ten scale, correct? Right. Five would be the exact mathematical average. Yes. Right. Then I visited for as research for this about half a dozen different haunt review sites and clicked at least twelve reviews on each or so, just sort of going through things. Right. I did not see a single review lower than a six point nine. Wow. Think about that. That's... <laughs> they should just go to a 1 to 5 system then. Um, that's what... That's... Yeah, that, that doesn't make any sense. None of these... That's just it. I mean, under our current system, 8 is bad, 9 is okay, 10 is good. There's no delineation there. Right. And so not only are the numbers meaningless in terms of they carry no impact, you know, they're not describing anything that's effective to me and making me making a decision about going to a haunt, there's no delineation. Right. When your scale literally starts at a six point, basically a seven, yeah. and goes to a ten, there's no delineation. When seven is one well, star now. <laughs> yeah. Well, and people reading the review aren't going to know that a seven's bad. If it's seven out of ten, they only clicked that one think, review, especially. Yeah, I'm going to think that it's pretty it. good. Yeah, it's at least reasonable. It's at least mediocre. Yeah, it's better than average. Yes, exactly. I mean, in score inflation, this is a problem that every review industry has had. By the way, right? The worst right now is video game reviews. <laughs> they have had this problem for a long time and have not actually really cracked it in any yeah. meaningful way. I admit this. So we're not alone on this one, guys. But score inflation is a big, big deal because basically what it means is your 1 to 10 scale, your 1 to 100 scale, whatever, essentially becomes a 7 to 10 scale and everything's got to be put on it. And it's weird because there was one I went to where no haunt had lower than a 9 out of 10. Yeah, they're, no. they're just making up numbers. And it's like 9.0 to 10.0 was the scale. Oh, and they put in the decimals? Yeah, they put in decimals. 
Wow. Yeah, that's not useful at all. At that point, it should just be 1 to 10. Yeah. And I, I mean, I get it. And I get the challenge here because even like mediocre haunts, I enjoy. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to say horrible things about. You know, unless the haunt is actively terrible and does something like try to kill me. Yeah. Which we've had happen. Yeah. Um, the haunts, I, I do my, I, you know what I mean? Even a haunt that maybe isn't as good can still be a lot of fun. It's, I mean, haunts are kind of like ice cream in that regard. Right. I enjoy it even when it's not necessarily the best. But if we're going to have reviews that have meaning and have impact and use to the readers, and you're going to use a numbering system, if you insist upon using a numbering system, that numbering system has to mean something. Right. And right now, between the vagueness of the numbers and the, the score inflation problem, it means absolutely nothing. It's just baseball stats. <laughs> Don't tell you anything about the player. Um, most haunt reviews... Now, I would be cool with all this, by the way, if there was really good, really in-depth discussion about the haunt with most of these reviews. Right. But there rarely is. Yeah. There are a few that do this. There are a few that have really good, like, thousand-word reviews of a haunt. And really do actually write out what they're thinking. And that that is cool. But most is like a blurb, a streak of numbers, and there you go. Yeah. And that's, it, it's meaningless. Yeah. They're, that, they're, that doesn't help anybody but them get in for a free show. Yeah. And that, I understand why a lot of haunts are skeptical. Especially considering that a lot of these teams do show up with a lot of people. Right. Um... So it can be very, very frustrating. And, yeah, it's like I said, if I'm a haunt consumer, which is supposedly the ideal audience for a haunt review, you know what I mean? <clears throat> there's just not enough information here to make an informed decision. Yeah. I mean, there just isn't. No. I can click these reviews all day and have no better of an idea. I'm just going to walk away with the impression all the haunts in the area are good and I should just pick one. Yeah, I mean, that... It's basically what that numbering system does, um, especially when people are, you know, using the 9 to 10 scale <laughs> instead of, oh my god, that's just horrible. And um, yeah, it, it doesn't give the correct information, it doesn't tell the reader anything about what's good in the area, and everybody's going to think every haunt is good if everything's a 9 to a 10, Yeah, a 9 out of 10, a 9 point something out of 10. It, it completely defeats the purpose of it completely defeats the purpose of a review. Yes. If it does nothing to weed out bad actors, if it does nothing to, you know what I mean? Right. To to address these issues. And <clears throat> right now that's what we've got. We've got a scale where people are doing these haunt reviews. They're going in and then what they're putting online is of no value to almost anyone. And I think a lot of these groups mean well. They're, they're trying to do something good. They're trying to do something helpful. Right. But, and then that's, and that's just it. I, 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 as a haunt reviewer, I don't think there's a lot of bad faith here. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't think these are people with ill intents. I think we as an industry do not have our review norms down. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. And, and that's pretty true. <laughs> Because we have review teams, we have groups that go out and do these reviews, but we as an industry, as a collection here, do not really have our norms down. We don't really know what the reviewers should be saying or doing, what they should be including or not including. I mean, and, you know, we don't have, like, Rotten Tomatoes <laughs> <laughs> for haunting. Right. <clears throat> Which Rotten Tomatoes, you know, is, is for what it is... It's a very interesting way of homogenizing and putting all films onto the same review scale mm -hmm. and providing some context. Right. It's, it's, it's at least somewhat useful. Yes. I, 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 as a lover of bad films, I have almost no trust in, ha in what Rotten Tomato says, but there is at least information being conveyed there that is of use to make a decision. Right. In fact, for us, the lower the <laughs> yes. score on Rotten Tomatoes, the better the movie. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. So it is useful information. We just use it in just, the opposite <laughs> way that they intended. Yeah. And here's the thing. I mean, my personal belief is that reviews are critical to this industry. Mm -hmm. And the reason I believe that, <clears throat> if a family of four goes to a haunt, 
Right. That can be a hundred and forty dollar or bigger commitment. Yeah. I mean, thirty five bucks a ticket, four people. That's a hundred and forty bucks right off the top. Right. That's a big commitment. It is. That's you know, and especially if you got to go out to dinner while you're doing it, and you're going to get drinks and other things. There, you're and looking if it's at far hundred... away. You've got travel, exactly. gas, money. Yeah. It's time. It's money. We need customers to trust reviews. Yeah. <clears throat> Because we need customers to be able to direct people to the haunts that are worth their money and worth their time. And we need to filter out the haunts that are bad actors. Because we've been to haunts. We've talked about them. Right. <laughs> go, go, watch, go watch some of our reviews. Uh, go watch like Revelation, Beulah Fun Park. Yeah. <laughs> we talk about some of these haunts that are clearly bad actors. <laughs> yeah. Either through malice, lack of care, or lack of tactical preparation right put up terrible haunts yeah just objectively terrible haunts they don't get consistently called out with this system right yeah they don't um because if everything's scored highly then nothing can be bad yeah if there's all scored highly and there's no real conversation taking place right <clears throat> The end result is every haunt seems like a good haunt. And the, the point of it is we're supposed to be filtering out and getting rid of obviously bad actors. Because there are haunts like the Mortuary, which really struggled its first year here yes. locally. It really struggled. And I think we did a review its first year, did we? I'm trying to remember. I think so. I think it might have been one of my written reviews back when I was doing that. Right. And I, but we, it was covered somehow by us. But, you know, we said that it was... But what we said there was, yeah, it's struggling, yeah, it's got issues, but there's potential. Right. And you know what? We were right. Yeah. <laughs> go Team Rocket. <laughs> or, I'm sorry, we should be saying Go Team Mystic. <laughs> ah, everyone's attacking us now. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully we don't have too many Valor and Instinct people watching this, listening, listening to this. Why are they yeah. watching? If you're watching this, know. if you're watching this, how? Yeah. <laughs> How is a valid question here. But in all seriousness, we need customers to trust these reviews. We need right. customers to be able to look at these reviews and make informed decisions so they will feel their money was well spent. Because if they go to these bad actor haunts, it's going to hurt the industry as a whole because they're going to be less inclined to do it next year. Right. And um, really, it's a bad apples. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's not that the the actors are bad, but you know, yeah. the, the actual bad actor haunt, bad apple right. haunts. Right, bad apple. And the flip side of the coin is we need haunts to trust reviews too, because one of the things, and I get this, okay, as someone that's worked front of house, yeah, someone who's done this, getting honest feedback is one of the hardest things for haunters. It is, and I love honest feedback because no, yes. coming from um, an art background. Basically, what we did was we had critiques every week of our work to make us better. Yeah. It was strategic critiques on how to improve. Yes. It's not just pointing out the bad. It's not just poo-pooing all over everything. It's, No, sometimes know, it felt that way, I'm sure. Well, yeah. But it's, this is what's wrong. Here's a couple of ideas of how to fix it. This is, you know... You can have objectively bad reviews, but still get good information out of yes. it on how to improve. And that's one of the things that I think is really, really important is right now we aren't – it doesn't feel to me looking at review sites and reading haunt reviews like a lot of great, truly useful feedback is being given. Right. If I were a haunt owner, being one of the, getting one of these reviews – I would not necessarily know what to change or improve. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, okay, so you got four I got, stars out of five on everything. And I got an eight on makeup. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. <laughs> where, do I, where do I go with this information? Right. What do you do? Uh, I got a nine on effects, an eight on makeup, and set design was a ten. I mean, what? Well, yeah, and it's, it's like with new employees, whenever they go for their... Um, their first evaluation. First evaluation rarely will the new employee get all high marks on everything. Yes. And even if it's fake lower marks, it's because they want them to know that there's room for improvement. Yes. Now, 
And, and the flip side of this, in addition to the feedback, though, is that positive reviews obviously can drive crowds. Correct. But that's only if the positive review means something. Yes. If everybody gets a positive review, then there are no positive reviews. Right. They're all just mediocre. They're all just getting the same treatment, and then no one's gaining anything from this. There's no feedback being given. And like I said, these are generalizations. I've read, and I did read some haunt reviewers I think were doing excellent work. Right. Uh, they were doing very well. This is a generalization about the types of reviews that are common in this industry. Right. And it's very frustrating to me because I want, you know, when I do a review... I have two hopes with it. And the first hope, honestly, is that it goes back to the haunters who will make changes and improvements and pat themselves on the back where appropriate and so forth. Right. And the other hope is that I do hope that people that are interested in the haunt will learn whether or not it's a haunt they want to go to. Right. And that's part of what we do. And we'll get into it in a minute. But we try to make it so that even if you are going to disagree with us, you have enough information to make that decision. Right. And then go or not go based upon it. Yeah. We recognize that we are not God because at the end of the day, haunt reviews are just one person's opinion. Yep. That's e it. Even if it's a haunt review team, it's still, it, it's still one person's opinion. The 30 people did not write that review. Correct. It, 30 people did not write that review. It's, it's it's Somebody sat down and wrote it yeah. and then clicked all the numbers and everything. Yeah, and it probably didn't even go through a review process. Yeah, and others may not share that opinion. And this is why it's important to give information, why it's important to talk about what's there. Um, you know, and so that way if the reviewer, if the reader rather, has a differing opinion and wants different things out of a haunt than the reviewer. Right. I mean, a, a good example for us that we run into all the time yeah. is the 13th Gate. Okay. Um, we review the 13th Gate typically very highly because we love the set design. We love the actors. They're very talented, very theatrical. Right. Other people go through it and review it more negatively because of the lack of hard scares. Yes. I get that. Yeah. This is where we differ. I, I've been through so many haunts in my life that yeah. hard scares don't really do it for me anymore. Right. I've reached. I appreciate different things in a haunt than the people reading or watching our reviews. Right. And that's fine. Yeah. But we're two very different haunt customers, and I hope that through our review, you are able to make a decision for yourself. Right. We've actually gotten a little bit of flack. Yeah. On and I understand on that. our reviews and um, still have to answer that, <laughs> but <laughs> we'll be doing that sometime soon. Yes, we will. Um, uh, lots but yeah, we do. We do look at haunts differently because we have the experience of working in and building haunts, and because we don't get scared the way that normal customers get scared. Right. So, you know, that's something there. I, I will see a scare executed and have mad, mad respect for the skill, the tactics, the acting, the timing, everything that went to it, but may not respond to it. Right. I mean, there have been times where I've, like, um, the Insanitarium, the one we went to, yeah. the Haunt Tour, beautifully set up scare gorgeous tactics on it. Timing was perfect. Coordination between multiple people to make it happen. Right. Great distract and startle. Beautiful, beautiful. It didn't make me like jump or scream or anything, but I just, I, I stood there and I clapped. I remember clapping in yeah. the middle of this haunt and how great that was executed. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but um, it's important. This is why it's important to know for the reader or viewer where the reviewer is speaking from. Yes. Because you have to know that reviewer and what they like and what they're looking for so you can make that decision. Right. Like, one of the things we don't like and we talk about all the time not liking, we're very transparent with it, is chainsaws. Yes. We just, we don't get it. We're not scared of them. I, Too many decades of yeah, haunts, I think, is the problem. It seems like it's at almost every haunt we go to. And... I, 
And then, look, I understand they have their place. I'm not totally knocking it. Right. But there are some haunts that do have an extreme over-reliance on them. Right. <clears throat> so, and then it's just frustrating for, you know, a lot of the pe- for the actors who are the chainsaw person. Yeah. You know, it's usually a coveted role. And if you've got people not responding to it, it's aggravating. Yeah, I agree. So, now, now we're coming to our reviews a little bit here. And I want to talk about us because we do try to be different. I don't know how well we succeed. Yeah. But we try. Right. <clears throat> the first way we're different is we are haunters. Yes. That's plain and simple. We have worked and operated haunted attractions. Yep. We we're not pro haunters. No. Nope. So that's no conflict of interest. But we have built haunts. Yes. We have worked in haunts. Yes. We have been doing this for over ten years now. Right. And we are very familiar with the limitations, the challenges, and the problems that are faced. Correct. In fact, you know, we do what we do on such a tight budget. You know, we're very familiar with the budgetary limits and the need for creativity and the various issues that haunts run into. We get this. And that actually, I think, helps us in trying to relay useful feedback to the haunt owners. Right. And the people making it because, you know, because, yes, we don't know all the challenges a specific haunt faced, but we're not going to sit there and criticize endlessly the lack of a roof in a section. No. Instead, you know, we're going to say maybe they could do more to obstruct the sight line. Right. To make it less obvious. Right. Or make it darker up there so there aren't so many right. light. Use leaks. light techniques and so forth. Or, yeah. You know, there, there are ways to deal with it. Yeah, we, we do get... A, a little bit technical in our yeah. reviews because we look for actor runs. If your actor runs look like a way that I can go instead of an actor run, mm-hmm. that's a problem. If they're very obvious, it's a problem. Yeah. You know, I see it as an issue anyway. That is a problem we've run into repeatedly in haunts, even some very good ones actually. Right. Is actor runs I've actually gone down an actor run once for about 20 feet. Yeah. Completely just thinking it was the way to go. And because they use the same uh, drapery. Right. <laughs> for the actor runs as the actual room dividers. Yeah. So I'm like, man, this hallway is not very well decorated. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And we all have to turn around and, and go, go back. back. And, yeah. yeah. I, Confusing um, yeah, that- ways to go through the haunt. Yeah. That aren't on purpose, obviously. Yeah. Um, no. That That's a real frustration. But yeah, we've, like I said, we are haunters. We, yes. We've lived this. We know the challenges. We know the game. And we have respect and appreciation for the craft, first and foremost. Oh, yeah. And that, I think, really helps us relay this um, and talk about this in the reviews in a way that's not just useful to potential customers, but also to the haunts. Right. That's what we try to do. Once again, not sure how successful. Yeah. What we're trying to do. Um, the second way we're different is we are prepared to pay. Yes. We show up at every haunt, cash and or debit in hand. Yeah. Now, here's the deal. We never expect a free ride. But if they recognize us, and we know a lot of the haunt owners around here personally anyway. That's right. just from being in the industry and being around people. Yeah, we're a close minute community. We're a close, we're a close community, especially in this area part of the world. I mean, is a, if they see us and they recognize us and they offer us free tickets, we're not going to fight them. Right. Because that's a useless argument. Shut up and take my money! And yeah. Holding up the line, that's, that's useless. We take the ticket, but then we disclose it in the review. Yes, and we let them know whenever we take a free ticket that we are going to disclose it. Mm-hmm. Um, we, oh, I think we only have one haunt right now that we've actually taken them up on it. One more was offered, but we didn't get a chance to get by. So yeah, we um, well we've gotten a few free tickets at various haunts over the years, but we still yeah. pay for the vast majority. Right, and the other thing is, is that. You know, if we get a free ticket, we really love you. We're going to bring people back and pay yeah. the second pot. Yeah, it's... So... <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we, we are always prepared to pay. Well, it's not only that, but like, the the other thing that we do is if we do get a free ticket, we, then we spend more money at your merch tables. Yeah, we will try to find ways to give you money anyway. Yes. <laughs> we make a valiant effort yes, to spend money. Yes, unless you're actually, you know, just 
not trying at all, you're we're going to contribute because yeah. that's part of being a haunter. Yeah. And a reviewer is that we want to contribute to yes. your business. Yeah, this that that is and I guess that's part of the mentality that we have is we look at ourselves even though we are reviewers as part of the community. Yeah. And part of that is contributing and not trying to siphon anything off of it, not trying to, you know, to always be paying your dues as you go through. Right. Every step of the way. I'm perfectly fine if they won't offer a free ticket, like I said, but we will disclose it. But the flip side of the coin is I'm never going to demand it in exchange for a review. Oh, no. Which is what some, and like I said, this is me talking to other haunters. Some have said haunt review teams and haunt reviewers will do. Yeah. And that that's not how this rolls with us. No, and it's not <clears throat> acceptable for reviewers to demand that. No, I, I agree with that. If or to request up, it, yeah. Yeah, if you show up and a reviewer does that, send them home. Because well, you don't want their, you know, their review anyway. Well, another thing that we uh, don't do is we don't accept ads. Now, technically that's not true. We don't control ads. We don't sell ads. We um, do run ads on the YouTube videos we post. But right. YouTube sells those, not us. Right. We, we have zero those. control over that. So there's no way to say, you know, we'll buy an ad on your videos. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't work. We have zero control over who advertises on our videos. Right. There are ads, but they're not ours, basically. Yeah. And judging from the pennies I get from them, I'm not getting any money anyway. Yeah, so, no kidding. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we don't accept, we don't sell ads. We don't offer them. And so there's literally no way to buy a greater presence on our site or in our videos. No. I mean, your presence at the end of the day will be determined by when we show up for your haunt because it's in reverse chronological order. Yeah. If we show up later in season, it'll be toward the top. That's just how it is. But then again, it's a less useful review because fewer people will be seeing it in time to go. Right. Okay. That's yeah. one of the reasons we do try to hit the haunts early in the season, mm -hmm. in addition to finishing ours. Yeah. Um, in addition to all the other reasons we have yeah, to do this. We are trying to fit as many as we can in those first two weeks of season so that we can get the reviews done and out there back to back as fast as possible to reach as many people as yeah. possible. Yeah. So, yeah. And here's the thing. We don't really do anything in our reviews other than talk about our experience. Right. That's it. Yep. It's two people. It's like, it's, it's like this. Yes. Two people That's sitting right. in front of a camera this time. Yes. Talking about our experience with a haunted attraction. Right. That's it. That is, the, we know that's really it. We try to compare it to other haunts, how they're similar, how they're different. Maybe one haunt stronger in this area, weaker in another, and vice versa. We try to give a frame of reference. We try to talk about what we enjoy. Like I said, the chainsaw thing keeps coming up. Right. Um, but we also try to point out where other people might think or feel differently. For example, if you want a family-friendly haunt, maybe this one, even if it wasn't our favorite, right. maybe this is where you should go. If you want you know, an ultra-hardcore haunt, once again, maybe not our favorite thing, maybe you should go here. Yeah. We try to give those frames of references because we recognize we speak for ourselves. Yeah. But nobody else. And we want to make sure that the information we give, because when I say, okay, this haunt is like, you know, the House of Shock, but different in these ways. Yeah. Well, if you've been to the House of Shock, you have a frame of reference and you can think about, well, would I enjoy the House of Shock with these things? Right. And that lets you put it in that mindset and lets you make the judgment, which is what I want. I don't want people just to blindly follow me and say, well, yeah, Jonathan said it was good. It must be good. That's not what it's about. It's about, you know, what Jonathan said it's good. But he said it was good for these reasons. Should I go? Yeah. You know, what do I think? I want people to think for themselves, not listen to me. Right. And we do give information that is useful to customers. You know, at least we try. Mm -hmm. Something like that that they can form the frame of reference for. But we also do go into the technicalities of the haunt build. Yes. So that we are giving something to the owners. Yes. We try to do both, yes. You know, because at the end of the day, it's this is it to me. We don't assume we're right. No. 
I don't I back I know I'm not right. I'm just yeah. throwing that I when it comes to the reviews, I'm a big fat stinking idiot a lot of the times and I admit <laughs> it. I live with you. I'm used to admitting I'm a big fat big fat stinking idiot a lot. Oh god. But you know, I I admit this. I admit this openly. So my goal is not to, to pretend I'm right. I'm not some grand expert. I'm not the judge, jury, and executioner of haunted attractions. I'm just a guy who had an experience and wanted to share it. Right. That's it. Yeah. And um, one note that is, um, an- another interesting point is, we are not anonymous. Nope. We're in front of a camera. You know us. I'm Jonathan. <laughs> yeah. I'm Crystal. <laughs> and so you know who we are. You've seen, you can see our faces trivially online. You, you see can us find, at conventions. You can <laughs> find us, you know, garbage horror. You can find our haunt. You can find everything about us. Yes, you know where we live. You know Maybe that's not a good thing. That's not a good way to put that. <laughs> but you know all this stuff. We're not hiding behind any shroud of anonymity. Right. And part of the reason for that is because, and this is one of the other issues I have with um, an, an anonymous reviews, is because it can be different people each review. So if one guy goes and reviews a haunt and another guy goes and reviews a haunt, even if they have the same name, they're going to have very different ways of looking at it because they're different people. Right. I have the same eyes as me. Yes. <laughs> wow, that sounded like Murdoch from A-Team. <laughs> We've <laughs> yeah. been watching a little A-Team lately. So a little bit. <laughs> that, that more A-Team references slip out. But, you know, that's just it. My eyes are going to stay in my head, so therefore every haunt I review will be seen through the same eyes. That's not necessarily true of anonymous reviewers. I'm not saying right. it isn't true. Right. Some haunt reviewers do keep, and some reviewers in general do just use a pseudonym, and it's the same person. Yeah. But with all these review teams, it can be very unclear if it's the same person or the same group of people or whatever visiting. Right. So you can't do direct comparisons a lot of times. Yeah, that's very true. That's a good point. Um, so here's the thing. I think we, as an industry, do need to fix these issues Yeah. that we have. And the main thing we need, and this is going to be very difficult to do, I admit, is we need greater transparency. Yeah. We need full disclosure of free tickets. Mm-hmm. And this is for the reviewers, by the way. Full yeah. disclosures of free tickets, full disclosures of paid ads, any potential conflict of interest. Right. Are you co- first brothers, cousins, uncles, nephews, former roommate with, yeah. with the owner of the haunt? No, ex, uh, ex-girlfriend or boyfriend. <laughs> you know, exactly. Is there some conflict of interest there that may make you, you know, more biased against or for it? Right. There needs to be a, a constructive way to disclose that. But even if we don't disclose all of it, like I said, we are a tight-knit community, and if I had to disclose every time I reviewed a haunt someone I was friends with, at least to some degree, right. it would be impossible. Yes. <laughs> ah, yes, we know them too. Yes, yeah. they're, they're great people. Yeah. He does great barbecue. I mean, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be a long list, but yeah. but the the problem. But we do need to at least disclose the free tickets and the ads. Right. We need to do that because those are financial conflicts of interest. Exactly. And those are some of the most difficult ones to weed out. And this is once again this this is my personal opinion. I admit it, but I think we need to get away from the the baseball stats and the meaningless numbers on these reviews, especially if we can't tackle score inflation. Right. It just doesn't make any sense. It's not useful information. We need to focus on reviews that are useful and convey experiences and let readers judge if that's an experience they want. Yeah. And you can, and for the record, and this is something I know some people might be wondering, you can share experiences without spoilers. Yeah. That's very possible. You have to be right. mindful, but you can do it. Yeah, that is something that we do avoid. Yes. As we do not talk about your new big scare. We don't talk about any spoilers. We we, um, we're, we try to be very careful about that. We're careful about that, and we generalize. Yeah. A lot. We speak, We and sometimes that can, there's, can be a bit of tension there between those two, I admit. Yes, because sometimes there's something really, really cool, and I want to tell you all about it, but I can't. I just have to tell you there's something really, really cool, and you should go see it for yourself. And, and keep it vague. Like, there's some really cool animatronics yeah. that you'll be seeing. <laughs> there's a really cool room. We won't talk about the giant flipping dragon that, like, comes down from the ceiling. Yeah. You know, we'll talk instead of, in general, about animatronics and things like that. That's right. what we try to do. 
Um, our reviews are totally unscripted, by the way. We have like zero yeah. script. It's just kind of like this podcast. It's kind of like this podcast. Yeah, we, we have, have bullet points. Bullet here, points, but... and that's about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we don't even have that for the reviews, so. though. Yeah, and and one thing I think that we should be doing as an industry is trying to make reviews fun. Yes, please. Fun. Act like you enjoyed the haunt when you went. I, I then that was one of the things I realized as I was doing the research for this and visiting all these haunt reviews, right? I'm reading reviews for haunted attractions, right? Right. Why do I feel like I'm playing fantasy football? <laughs> <laughs> or, you know. And if you like fantasy football, that's not a criticism, but you know what I mean. Yeah. It, it's, it did not feel like I was reading reviews for haunted houses. It, Other than, like, you know, the horror tropes and the black backgrounds on the websites and so yeah. forth. There was nothing that screamed haunted attraction, nothing that screamed fun or excitement and all this. Right. It screamed algebra. Yeah. <laughs> and I hated algebra. <laughs> I got a five on the calculus AP test, and I dumped all my math knowledge immediately. <laughs> I can barely add, okay? <laughs> oh, that's not true. But you know what I mean. It, it, yeah. It's like it, nothing screamed excitement or fun or intrigue. It was all right. Num it was all a wall of text and numbers that were not necessarily particularly useful. It was frustrating. It yeah, I can I can see the frustration in you. They can't, unfortunately, but hopefully they can hear it in your voice. <laughs> hopefully. Um. <sighs> yeah, because I mean, at the end of the day, we are an entertainment industry. Yes. And so the reviews should be entertaining. You know, there's uh, here in New Orleans, there's this. Um, Food Critic, the anonymous food critic's his name. He's on one of the uh, stations. I can't remember which one it is for the life of me. Okay. But um, he does this thing where he goes on camera, but he's like blacked out. Right. But he's talking and he's got the voice distortion like his deep throat or something. Yeah. <laughs> and he's talking about these restaurants in the city. And the thing is this, you hear and you feel the passion from him. Right. And it's like the intrigue of who he is. And it's exciting to watch his reviews. And you can make read, you know, written reviews exciting too. Right. But you know, if we if we want to do numbers, do numbers. But just remember, we need to keep the excitement going too. Somehow, we need a way to keep that energy up, because this is an entertainment industry. And by God, you know, Siskel and Ebert did not become famous for movie reviews just because they gave accurate, great movie reviews. Right. They were entertaining as hell to watch. Yeah. They wouldn't have been on TV <laughs> with their reviews. They wouldn't have been syndicated newspaper columnists of the reviews. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. They wouldn't have gotten the fame that they got if they hadn't been entertaining. They, they were exciting and interesting, and we need to do that. Yeah. Uh, we... I don't think that's our place, but, man, we could use our own Siskel and Ebert in this industry. Yeah, we definitely could. And like I said, our eventual goal is to go pro with a haunt. And the minute we do that, the reviews stop. Yeah. That's that's we've already decided that that's the instant. We only want to be one way or the other. But yeah, it may be but we need a Siskel and Ebert. We need that type of excitement right. in our reviews. And hopefully we can get that. So anyways, do you have any final thoughts? No. <sighs> yeah, it's this is a rough one, and I'm, I'm glad. I think we did it pretty thoroughly, but, yeah, God, it's... Our industry really is struggling here, and hopefully some really good haunt reviewers can step forward and fill some of this gap. Because one of the other problems we have, and we didn't even discuss this, is haunt reviewers all... I mean, movie reviewers anywhere in the world can review a movie. Right. Doing to the interwebs and all that stuff. Yeah. You know, anybody can review a film. But geography also hinders us. If we do find our Cisco and Ebert, how are they going to get to every haunt? Right. You know what I mean? So we need a nationwide effort for better reviews. Yeah, and I have seen a little bit. But once again, then you're going to get into that team. Yeah. You're going to have people going out as a, as a part of an organization to do reviews. And... And I have seen that starting. Yeah, we have that a lot. I mean, there are haunt team, haunt review teams out there. There's lots of them. It's mm -hmm. the primary mode of haunt reviews these days, unfortunately. For better or worse. I shouldn't say unfortunately. For better or worse, that's the norm. Right. But, man, we, we, we really need to find ways to make our reviews as exciting and as wonderful 
as our industry. Right. And we also need to make sure that the reviewers are vetted as people who actually enjoy going to haunts. Because <laughs> then just, they'll, they will get that excitement into their reviews. Yes. I think that would be a, a great step, too. Well, that's all for this week. We've ran a few minutes over, but that's okay. This yeah. is a podcast of no set length, other than it will try to make it about 50-ish minutes each time. Yeah. That's like our goal. So on that note, everyone, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this was Haunt Weekly, episode number 33, Haunt Reviews. We will see you guys next week.